Like once yeah. once EG actually had their team fight online, then it seemed like the Kunker was a lot more useful. But in the early stages, it was it was the Rubik and Night Stalker show. They were everywhere, they were all over everything. So yeah, I'm wondering if if TNC give as much respect to that, or if they continue to try and play this fast paced style of game. Can you do that with a silencer though? Like the silencer drag you into a certain rhythm of game for TNC? Uh, you can you can compensate for his weakness. I mean, in a way, he's if he's going to be played by one four three seven, he he was a Rubik last game, and I think yeah. yes, he helped with a couple of ganks early, but wasn't like very integral to the way they took fights and the way they ganked. Uh, if they pick a similar style of lineup with Silencer instead of Rubik, I think it totally works. This what each year, but they're actually targeting Tim's pretty damn hard on their bands, three in a row so far. Stop his rotation, secure the laning phase, secure the mid game. Win. So like in ban. Well, I suppose that means Arteezy gets to play something new. Diversity yes. rating, now massively high. Two different heroes <laughs> in two games. Sample size. Wow. wow. <laughs> it's great. Good for people who voted on Arteezy as most... Was that only team or was it player? Oh, you had, you had a player as well. Player who plays the most different heroes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I picked Arteezy. And I think I'm going to be right in not picking... That so far, he's going to be tied for first, okay? <laughs> so far, he's tied for first, so... Yeah, I picked we'll some see. mail! No! <laughs> and oh, that it could still be a universe. universe. Park. It could be. TNC's turn to There's a TA ban again. Very uh, similar to last game. They did ban the Earth Spirit this time around, however, because Night Stalker was out. I can't remember what the third ban was of the last game from EG. Overall, you've got, like, the same feeling of flow in this draft. Minor adaptations, but no, like, big overhaul from either team so far. I think TNC won't go jugger this game. I, I, it felt like in that last game that he just couldn't do what they wanted the hero to do. Um, maybe they can make it work now that they have the silencer. We'll see. Here comes the Sam King that EG banned in the first game. So this is plan C or D for TNC after all of Tim's heroes got banned. I like how you like it's, it's plan C or D, but like you still like SK was meant to be one of the most contested hero. Most people yeah. in their predictions had SK as the most picked hero yep. coming into this tournament. I believe you're actually one of them. As yes, well. I did. Uh, a lot of people picked Shaker as the most picked hero. I think he's going to be banned too much though. Uh, so far, sample yep. size for this. This series is that it, that is the case. Uh, I'm guessing in one or two of the other games that are running right now, there might have been a single Shaker pick, but the reason that hero is so powerful is its ability to play multiple lanes, multiple roles, off lane, mid, and roaming is a possibility. Um, just controlling that off lane, making sure you get experience, being annoying, having great team fight, and a pretty good laner in one. Shaker actually has a lot of good matchups. Yeah, we're not going to be seeing that hero. He'll, he'll be banned as much as I. I yeah, think I had, more or less. I think I had Nine Stalker as my. That uh, could happen. He's I, also going to get banned a lot, though, I think. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, you can't ban everything. Now we only have, like, three or four heroes that will be banned every game. That's not really how it works. AG's going to approach Weaver. just now with their Weaver pickup. Interesting. Okay, so this is not a very common time to pick Weaver, and I think EG are going Drow. Um, and the reason for that is if you pick Weaver here and it's a core hero, uh, it's strange to pick it into the, this lineup that isn't actually particularly bad against Weaver. Lasso is pretty good, San Kingston is more or less instant against the Weaver. You want lockdown and burst damage, global silence is good. Um, so if if EG goes the route of playing a core Weaver here, it's nice in lane against Batrider, which frees up Oracle, but Oracle is not the kind of support that wants to rotate very much anyway. He kind of wants to play that safe lane and just pull and get levels. Uh, so maybe this is a Zai Weaver with Drower, or they put it mid or off lane for either Samail or... Uh, universe and grab the drow fourth. It has to be something that TNC are thinking. Triple range for EG, classic stuff. And could be drow game. Yeah. The more and more you look at it, yeah. But this is this is what we're looking for, right? In, in most of the drafts, especially in, in uh, day one of TI, when you're still uncertain how the meta's going to go, a draft which you just cannot read. Like, you start off with exactly what you had before, it's the R Park. But now, technically, you do still have like, still two saves. If you can get around the, the, the Silence of Silencer, you've still got the False Promise. You've still got Weaver's Time Lapse. You've got higher maneuverability from both Weaver as well as Puck. Hard to lock down heroes, but TNC also has some really good lockdown. So yeah. it, it's from both sides, both teams have really good synergy and counter against each other. It's all about execution. And I think TNC are digging into their reserve pool a lot here because they want to figure out what they do in case it's a drow. 
and I think they might be picking ahead. It's a tinker. Tinker? Of course it is. This is TNC. Of course it's a tinker for Cuckoo. That is, it's probably with the thought in mind that, okay, if they go Drow, we want to be able to hold our towers. Uh, Tinker is a pretty good hero against Drow in the sense that you have March of the Machines. Drow lineups want to, like, go together and push towers. There you go. Um, yep. And then you can put March of the Machines. You have the laser. Uh, G's lineup doesn't have, like, the best catch for him. You have the puck that can maybe find Tinker, possibly get caught off guard by a swarm. But apart from that, not the not the easiest kill. Now, what TNC desperately need is some sort of physical damage because they have like yep. zilch right now, and there has to be something uh, that allows them to to still get in on this draw. I mean, it's one thing that you can stall it, but you need to kill Drow. You can't just let her stand there and be like, I'm just gonna march with the machines for three minutes, and they're not taking the tower. Not how it works. Well, do, do you get like some of the older counters? Like, do we look at, at uh, Spectre as one of the other? Spectre is an option. Uh, it's other one counters, uh, you can go to Life Stealer to work with the SK. Could be a choice. Uh, you could look toward something like Phantom Assassin as well. I don't know how much uh, Raven plays that. I think Phantom Lancer has a place in this game as well. Um, a hero that Drow simply can't deal with. You jump in with all the illusions and she can't kill them. Uh, they, they only the only really good AOE damage they have is the puck, which is pretty good. But sound, uh, the feet, the PL will outscale it eventually. And it's a lot less greedy of a pick than Spectre in my book, where you have stronger laning presence, you are able to join fights more frequently and earlier. Uh, Haunt got nerfed really hard. There's actually a PL ban from EG, so they were expecting that and will last pick the Piranha for more than likely some male with this Drow aura. This also means that EG have no frontline whatsoever in their Drow lineup, and that sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. Uh, Maybe they can get away with it because they have Oracle to protect with, but there is the Silencer. I'm actually not that sure for EG because of this Mirana pick. Frontlining is not going to be easy when you're playing into Global and a, and a Batrider. But if you get that five second arrow, that's why I'm wondering if this is actually a Zai Mirana. Uh, rotate with him and then let the puck for Samael go mid. Let the Weaver go offlane. Universe offlane Weaver? Uh, 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 yeah, Universe offlane Weaver. Yeah, could be. Because who's really going to be controlling him properly? Like, the SK closing distance on Weaver, as long as you can keep it up, you should be fine. TNC, we're going to see the last piece of that puzzle, and it is actually the Phantom Assassin you mentioned. Someone had to close the distance between the Drought Ranger and bring the heavy amounts of physical damage, and now they've got that damn Cuckoo set looks at me. The, tank, the Tinker? Yeah. I like the PA. It, it, it looks like Ro Robocop, but, right. like, Tinker. <laughs> okay, maybe Gadget. I like this. I like this PA set as well. His outfits are pretty cool. And then, uh, for some reason, Drow has purple leaves at the shoulders. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know about that. What is, what is that? I don't know. That doesn't seem right. It's like she just stole. Well, you know, like a, a big thing about like Drow Ranger's items, man. She's like she steals everything. The. Yeah. Because she just picks up all the crap off the ground. Patting the woods. Hey, would you want to wear something like that? No. Probably someone just got and said, this is a fashion crisis, throws it to the ground. Drury just like, hmm, I'm a fashion crisis, I'll take this. <laughs> Actually, it does look like a fashion crisis. <laughs> this, this is like a bit all over the place. Okay, let's talk about the game, though. Yeah, um, let's... <laughs> so I think, I think in this game, I favor TNC a lot more relative to last game. I don't know if they're favorites on this draft vice, but I like their chances better just because of the... Um, the way their their lineup matches up against EGs and the fact that they don't have a front line. If if TNC's lanes go well and they have these uh, these key items come out, the Batrider, Blink Dagger, and both PA and Tinker have farm, I actually think EG are going to lose this one late game. I think the Radiant lineup is extremely powerful at team fighting this time. They solved that problem by having both the Sand King and the Silencer. They have good lanes, and EG's lineup is very uh, one dimensional. I oh, want to say. Crit. You're not going back for this, are you? Is he going to try and de-ward? He's going to de-ward the Sentry Ward and keep his Observer Ward alive. They have to spend another 100 gold on this to try and stop the block. Very nice. And that started up nicely from 1437. He knew exactly, but he couldn't attack high ground. He didn't see up the hill. So he had to walk all the way around to attack it. I was going to say, man, that's a really great win for TNC. Now they can open up their pull. And now your offlane would be more scared, but... I think what TNT should do is they give Raven this rune. And he buys a sentry immediately. It's how, about, how about Tim's and uh, Sam Age can just kill off Arteezy? Oh, that's, that's another that's... way of getting gold, I guess. Yeah, yeah, Arteezy. You, you try and turn around when he's gone for like he's already gone for the pre precision aura. That's going to happen when you're running a five range lineup. Yeah, this rune is TNT's. I think they're gonna get three. Yeah. Ones.
Now, Crit's gonna try and contest this as well. He is gonna Tim's. regret that. Oh, Tim's He's, Oh, he didn't cut through. through! He ran around, and now, well, where's your bar of strike? It's gonna be three runes again to TNC. That's how last game started, but this time around, first blood will go the way of TNC, <laughs> okay, and there's yeah. nothing RTZ can do about it. <laughs> he held the stun the whole time and used it as a finishing move when they didn't even need it. <laughs> Oh, that's pretty funny. All right, anyway. Yeah, <laughs> Guaranteed, man. There's, yeah. there's no KSing in a team game. Why not? Why not get the kill on the Sanking? I mean, I think it's arguably better to have it on the Sanking so he gets fast tranquils. Oh, Zai, he found the Courier. They tried to send it around the corner. Tim's Burrows tries to try and cancel the attack, but it's the Salve that was moving in towards middle lane for Cuckoo. He wanted to be aggressive against the male, and now they both have exactly the same thing. They're both double stacking. Cuckoo's running the Ring of Ring of Rosie, and Samael's keeping the creep wave closer on his side. Yeah. The players are going to try to avoid what we uh, saw in the last game when I mentioned the, the double waving. Want to prevent that from happening. So you're going to run in these like weird circles to not get completely outnumbered on creeps. Samael has still managed to set up somewhat of a like one and a half wave here, and Cuckoo will be pushed into his tower, but this is not too bad. Like, this is definitely manageable for the Tinker. Zion1437 have beat the crap out of each other. Raven would love to attack into him, but a quick Shikuchi away, having that early Blightstone makes Zion's harassment quite difficult. Not to mention he also blocked up the pull that 1437 was attempting. Did you just say Shuki? No. Good. No. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> oh, you didn't. I, if, I just remembered. <laughs> <laughs> you had like this full year where that spell was called yeah, Shuki. <laughs> you know, you, you're, you're, not, you're not allowed to actually start putting those thoughts in my head. You meant to help me, Cinder, and not give me bad ticks for TI. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's, that's the worst thing ever. Here comes Shuki. <laughs> oh, Shikuchi, damn it. Oh, a nice fast dagger there from Raven. Will break the clarity of Zai. So far, so good for the laning for EG, though. They're getting very good CS on both the Drow and the Puck. Mid lane is a bit contested once again. Tim's is securing Cuckoo a good start on the Tinker. And as it looks right now with Cuckoo's skill build, he is doing the aggressive killing route with two in laser and one in missile. No marches just yet. Might still see him go the march route after this, just to have an, a, bit, a bit of an uh, early harassment build in lane. Uh, but it, it's very telling. His next skill points will be very telling for TNC's read on how to play this game because I think both builds in this game are viable. One is, we think we're going to get pushed by Drow, I'm going to get March. And the other one is, we think we're going to be better at fighting than them early on and we can just kill them before they take our towers if we max our nukes. I'm going to see what he chooses to go for. Top rune, crits. Yeah, crits on the run from Tim's. Meanwhile, Samael as well as uh, Zaya team up damage. on Cuckoo and they've got the damage. It's so much negative armor when you've got the Swarm plus the Blightstone. Swarm, Blightstone, Drow Aura. And Tinker yeah. has no defensive play except lasering a hero. That's that's a pretty big problem in this game when you have these two mobile ranged heroes for the Dire in the mid lane that like to just be able to at least get away somehow has to rely on protection from his teammate, and Tim's was not in the right position to save him. I still want to flag a bigger issue. It's the fact that the Universe, once again, is having a great offlane. Zai, with the pulling, completely messed up the Equilibrium, but it's that bonus damage that he's had early on has allowed him to go 18-5. He's got more CS than Arteezy has managed to achieve. I and this is against, like, the safe lane PA, who's now 13 for 0. You managed to catch up a little bit underneath the tower, and, well, okay, there goes Zeiss. I did do something about him now. Who oh, actually... has the nukes, and oh, Tim's had the Barra strike. Yep. Weaver has to be a little bit careful in the mid lane. The amount of burst damage that the Radiant uh, well, has in there is it's really high, but... This is something we've seen a lot of times from EG. They put Sam Universe H. off lane. Oh, no, that, that's, that's not going to work out. <laughs> not so there. They put Universe off lane on this puck, and then he has either Drow or Maiden or both Auras. There was a lot of games like that, I think, in the Kiev Major. Um, and then they start out with one hero in his lane to help him get a head start. And they, they get a very farmed puck as a result. And that's what Weaver accomplished in the first two minutes, just helping out Universe get a good start. And then he went in to get that kill in earlier. Universe, nice defensive play, getting away from that harass. Forcing us a, a salve out of Raven here as well in this wave. It's MH is really trying to get up in the face of this safe lane of EG. As much pressure as possible. He's gonna get a, a decent amount up here. This this safe lane of TNC is, or sorry, of, of EG is not that strong. The Drow is one of the weakest heroes in the game until level six, and oh, that was actually a kill. Yeah, Zai as well as Universe once again. 
like right now they're not even getting like a huge amount of bonus damage there's only 10 bonus damage coming in from the puck but catching him out again try to get in the way like 1437 throwing his body in the line so so zai cannot continue to creep pull and take the farm away from raven but raven can't survive this he's out of consumables on the safe lane he needs more life the big problem for him there's only one tango coming in from sounds he oh. has to buy something Zai thinking about it cutting the wave and top lane damage so the interesting thing about this game is that every core in the game is having a, a decent amount of farm. Like, oh, nobody's Raven. actually sacked. That's actually a nice play. Phantom striked himself forward, so he got hit by the orb of Universe, but Uni but Zai wasn't able to finish him off. Tim's also started his TP in very quickly. One, four, three, sevens here, and they're going to finally secure. In fact, they may actually just have to give the farm to Tim's. Yeah, they're sending Raven all the way back home. This kill of Phantom Assassin is... Just getting gimped so hard. That's not too bad if you look at the CS. Like every, all the six core heroes are are doing fairly well. I mean, Raven would obviously like to do better than this, but given the circumstances, I think 25 CS at this point against this lane is pretty respectable. And I, he would like to have more, of course. Like it's it's not the perfect game, but as far as the CS goes, EG have a lead of about, I guess, on average, like, 5 CS across their cores, and a bit of a, a gold lead here, but it's to be expected when they run a draw lineup like this. What really is going to make things come together is the first couple of fights, especially that the Batrider manages to set up for the Radiant. If they work, then this this gold lead of EG will not be sufficient. Raven's trying to kill off crit, rotated up towards the top lane, Arteezy, with just a level 1 gust, dissuading Raven, but the lane change up. Let's see oh, how long it lasts oh. for. You've already got Zai here. Raven needs someone to jump back out to. They TP'd in to help out, but it was Sam H who went to the shrine. He didn't actually go all the way in, but Crit and Arteezy have come out so far to try and fight Raven that maybe Sam H can capitalize. Tim's moving up to. They see him thanks to the Dire Observe Ward. Arteezy completes his TP out of safety. Zai, Chikuchi will get him away to safety, and Crit, well, he dies for the course. It would have been two kills for TNC if there was a dust on the Sand King. I think he's going to buy one soon. After that, it's going to annoy him that Zai was just able to freely run away there. Uh, either him or Sam H might see pick up a dust of appearance. He's currently just flying out another healing salve for Raven. They they have to give him something. Like top lane is the best place for him. At least TNC could do like like with one four three seven on the bottom lane. He can soak up some levels, do some harass range against the park, but he knows he can't contest it. Not until Cuckoo has BTs. Then the dynamic of this game can change. Yeah, that's still going to take quite a while. Mel in this mid lane having a good time. Generally, I would say this is a... Gucci just got burned from the Weaver. They've got a three-second window now to catch out Zai. Lasso is available. They're going to commit it for the Dream Call from Universe. Trying to counter off the gank. Zai, he tells Kuchi himself away to safety and Batrider will fall. Is TNC being aggressive, but underneath the Tier 1 tower. They get punished and punished hard. That, that's... They got the tower down low, they forced two TPs, and EG have two low heroes. And all they got was a kill on Batrider, which was definitely needed. If they if EG didn't get a kill there, that wouldn't have been very good for them with that nice three-man call from Universe. Uh, but yeah, good play from both teams in my opinion. They forced the rotation out of... Uh, TNC forced the rotation and put pressure, and EG respond very quickly. And Suppose you, got, you, you got the puck off bottom lane, Raven has more space to farm up. Yeah. You've still got Cuckoo getting more and more space as this Tinker in mid. Yeah, may maybe you're right. Maybe the sacrifice, the aggression, and the rotation from EG was all worth it. Tim's observe ward down. Not sure if Crit knew what happened. One, four, three, seven starts his TP out. He goes all the way home. He ain't taking any chances. Mid lane here. I still think this is going to be very crucial. The said the Tinker's BOTs are important. And Samael and the Marana, I think this is generally a fairly Tinker favored lane, but the draw aura makes a very big difference. And in addition, there's been quite a bit of chaos in here. The Courier being sniped level 1 is actually the reason. We haven't really talked too much about that, but that was the 1k gold lead EG had, was the Courier snipe. So, oh, mid lane Samael sitting in Invis. Yeah, but there's a Sentry Ward. It's just a little bit further to the north. It sees Zai coming in, so Kukri knows he has to back up, but the arrow from Samael and the Starfall damage. Binding with the swarm of Zai. Very nice kill. Allows for a very good kill, but the timing of it was perfect. He's hitting it now 1600 gold. Really oh, trying universe. to get the BTs. Sam Age. Universe is taking a lot of damage from this flame break. Uh, with the curse as well. 1437, the damage. They need more. 
and they don't have it. Puck gets home. First went Soul Ring. Puck, I think that's the first time I've seen that. So generally what he does is he goes Treads and then into straight Blink. Looks like he wants to solve some mana problems. We've seen Raindrop being the solution in the past. Raindrop plus one can often take you pretty far, but Soul Ring, you definitely will not have those mana problems to push out waves. I don't think I've ever seen anyone do. Maybe it's been happening recently in games I haven't watched, but Soul Ring on Puck don't go hand in hand in my book. That's very. It does seem like an odd combination, especially when you have like the natural regeneration. It's basically five, five a second. It makes a lot of sense. I play a lot of Puck myself, and often you find yourself without mana. Uh, but usually the way you go around it, as I said, is that you get a raindrop and then into Yules after the blink. But it still takes a long time, and maybe he's just been testing this out, where if you go Soul Ring, you can farm so much faster that after 10 minutes it's paid for itself. And then it's better than going for the blink. Alright, let's... 1, 4, 3, 7. Just gonna go for a quick curse over on side. Universe gonna orb himself away to save the TNC. They brought four heroes oh, they didn't get the deny. Tower, and they still don't get it. The catapult too strong. Arteezy activated the Drow Aura, and that range creep, or that siege creep, just did 100 damage in one shot. And they were not ready for that. Oh, for Cuckoo. He's not, he's not ready for this. At least he has his BT, so even if he dies right now, which he definitely does, uh, he still has his BTs available, but somehow going for more. One, four, three, seven burns the shrine. Sam H was thinking about coming into it, into the regeneration area, but now this just allows EG to look for a third kill, going one after the other. Universe was going to be safe. But the lasso just cannot control anything when crits nearby. And as I was, as I mentioned before, this game started. If TNC get through the laning stage well, they're going to have a really good chance. This laning stage looked okay five minutes ago. But now it's starting to really hurt. They've lost two towers. They've lost multiple heroes. Top three on CS are EG's heroes. And EG are only going to get more and more key items now. So I think this laning stage didn't, didn't go well enough for TNC. That doesn't mean they can't come back and take some good fights here. But it's going to be a bit of a struggle. They might need to buy time. But I feel like with every minute, they're going to get more and more out farmed and get picked off. So it's a bit of a, a tricky situation they've put themselves in here. F 5k behind. Approaching 6k. At least the experience is only 2,000 in favor of evil geniuses. Yeah, it's the, cur the courier snipe. Oh, such the a arrow. Thing. The observer wants a mail. Just saw it perfectly. Tim's had no idea what hit him until it literally hit him. Samail is playing without Moonlight Shadow. Suppose when your team right. doesn't need it? I guess so. This isn't the uh, Heroes of New Earth team. You have to Moonlight Shadow at level 6 without attacking. <laughs> I think the. The Moonlight Shadow is, you know, it's it's also an aggressive tool. Use it to find ganks and set up arrows for yourself, but so far in this game hasn't needed it. And of course, if you go for this build, you have a really high damage advantage. For sure. Wow. Well, everyone else is happy about that. 44 damage is being added to oh, every other did. hero on, uh, on EG at the moment. He didn't take a talent either. Skilled arrow over 150. But yeah, the draw is doing great. And usually what we've seen uh, what we've seen teams do against EG when they run their draw, is that they try to contest the draw's lane and shut down RTZ so that the team doesn't benefit so much. But then the other two lanes generally go well. And TNC's approach in this game was different. More focus on their safe lane and mid lane. And so far that has not paid off at all as they were hoping. I'm, I'm still waiting for TNC to try to make a move. Like they finally have all of their abilities online that they should want to have. They They're have Global Silence, Sand King Stun, Epi. They have Lasso with drums, uh, but they're not finding a play. No, they're, they've been here before. Like, oh, uh, they're finding Tinker. Yeah, bottom lane, back to the tier 2 tower. Zai's nearby, and the laser at least going to stop him from killing him off. Oh, Universe is so close to foiling there. Man, they, they actually need that Aghanim Scepter up. Like, everyone needs to be blinded in this game. Oh, is they using Regeneration Rune as bait? Smail. Hello! Through the arrow up, looking for a target. They go for the curse. One, four, three, seven. Doesn't that matter? Now he does for the global silence, allowing to find the kill onto Samael. Sam H will take it for the 451 gold, and they'd love to get a little bit more. And the tier one tower appears to be their target. Oh, Universe! Yeah, he's managed to find one. Baris right from Tim's missed time. He was looking to catch Universe mid jaunt away. The Universe Dream Call holds Tim's for Sam H in position. Crit. 
not finding any opportunity. They don't have reveal against the SK. Allow them to go for another Briar Strike. You get the Thalans from Universe, at least allowing... Okay, no, there it is. The Lasso is not allowing for anything. I was going to say, allowing Sam H just to watch everything going on. Yeah, EG are dropping the ball a little bit there. I feel like they didn't need to lose anyone else than just the Mirana. And TNC get more than what they came for. They got three kills, almost got the tower. Uh, and the, the Mirana kill in itself was really good, but they're going to be feeling very happy with what they just accomplished there in the last minute. Pretty much knocked EG's advantage in half within 30 seconds. It's that point where you feel like you found nothing. You smoke gank, you go through the entire jungle, you get Observer Wards down. It's, it's like the consolation prize I... to a smoke. <laughs> you so. wait for Tinker to, to actually have a crack at him. Yeah. But uh, then you find the three kills around the faded Samael. Yeah. At least uh, EG do have good aggressive wards, so they're watching Sam H pretty closely. He's rapidly approaching his own Blink Dagger, setting it now at 1900 gold, and EG have been very good at shutting down those heroes that are looking for those critical items. Originally it was keeping uh, the BTs of Tinker down, then they just turned their attention towards the Batrider. Soon lane, some mail. Ooh. He's barely missing that arrow on 1437. He was AFK, so it missed. <laughs> he was literally standing still. So there was an arrow flying right next to him. He didn't see it at all. He just stood there and it's like, oh, that's fortunate. <laughs> Syndrome's guide to avoid arrows. Take hands off keyboard and mouse. Stand still. It's the classic thing with, uh, you remember, Sing Sing used to play a lot of Mirana back when he was playing competitively, and he said it's way harder to hit arrows in pubs than in competitive because I have no idea what these idiots are doing. <laughs> <laughs> But this time it's the other way around, you know? And it's just next level the bottom. You just stand still and he arrows and you're like, oh, oh, there's an arrow. Uh, I, I, my prediction skills are meant to be amazing. You've got some mail. Like, you think at the moment from TI6, his prediction arrow was absolutely perfect. And, yep. Can't predict if your enemy takes his hands off the keyboard. Yep. Don't forget. Well, you add the arrow. Let's, uh, let's try to catch up a little bit on items. So, uh, Raven went for a Vanguard build this game on his Phantom Assassin. Felt like he needed to tank up. This makes the hero very tanky. He has 150 health talent and a Vanguard, um, as well as the one to go. So, tanky and sustainable against this uh, this dire lineup. Building in toward the Deso. Actually, we might need to wait with the rest they of the items. They this is shadow. a big moment. Sam H could make the, a big play here. The smoke is broken now. They don't have detection. Moonlight Shadow will wear off in two seconds' time. So they fire fly up. The Sentry Ward is down. So they found the target with the False Promise. Allows the male to bail out this one. The Dream Call, making sure Sanking has to stay exactly where he is. He has his epicenter available, but EG don't lose anybody. A quick Sandstorm. Zai, Barra Strike away. Tim's on the run from him. He has enough damage. Of course, he's got a freaking draw Ranger behind him. So Zai, Shikuchi's forward, they want to trigger off the shrine, and they're gonna get it. Universe jorted himself into the middle of all of TNC. They're bailing out, out of the shrine. Oh, the, arrow. the arrow will connect onto Tim's. He knew what he was gonna do that time, but no one from EG is close enough, or is he? Zai, you know he just wants to slip through the back lines and find somebody, but with Universe down, maybe think second, uh, like a second thought about it. That was a bit of a, a pretty scrappy fight, but at the end of the day, I think TNC come out slightly ahead there they get the mid tower they lost their silencer before he even got global off so that that fight could have been a lot better for them if he got that spell off but eg still you know managed to at That's least easy. get a kill on their way out that shadow blade being put to use already is the bat rider tims the borrow strike it'll save sam h he went down to 60 hp the global silence combining with the epicenter they turn around onto onto Dro ranger with a flame break she'll burn from this oh will she the damage oh the the keep her like... alive she'll oh, stay alive okay. no here comes another sentry ward cuckoo with his tp forward finds the kill onto arteezy Crit did everything humanly possible this with no false promise. Dead, Toby. I think he's gonna die. Oh, it actually takes longer than I oh. thought. Maybe he's fine. Man, get the bug off that 1437. It's the infestation. Raven's going in. The silence is there from Universe with the lasso. Quickly from Samael. Support is there. Crit this time around. He had the false promise to break it. But you've lost Samael. You're losing more. Maybe Raven. This is his time to shine. Needs the vision once more. Zai fighting an infus. Cuckoo brings him the support. Master Machines to get the cover fire. PA still trying to get the bug off him and get rid of that negative armor. Zai running what? through the bars of the machines. <laughs> revealed for half a second and gets rocketed to oblivion. EG, 
Oh. Man, you're calling the other fight Scrappy. That's Scrappy Do right yeah, there. That was even more Scrappy. Okay, Silencer did die, Toby. So that was that was the important part. <laughs> Critical one. Saw, saw it coming. Saw it coming when they went on him. He was definitely going to get into a 30 second fight and die in the middle of that. But... He got Global Silence on GG. <laughs> I, I thought he was going to die really fast, but actually a very nice counterplay there from TNC. So one four three seven ran to the left. And they were chasing him with both the Mirana and the, the Weaver. And if both of them get like two attacks off, he just dies. But there was a very quick stifling dagger from Raven to slow down the, the Mirana. And then they counterplayed and turned it around very nicely. And at the end of the day there, EG again, not really getting as much out of it as they would have hoped. Their gold lead is now down to 2k. And most of the time when we see EG have like this 5 or 6k lead with their Drow strats, they keep it. They yeah. roll with it, they extend it, and then they end the game at around 25, 30 minutes. This game... That's just not going to happen. I don't think EG can break the base that early, and they need to play for plan B. But this was this was the problem you're talking about, the drafting base. That's why you were favoring TNC a little bit more. And uh, while... Okay, no, bottom lane's not going to be a fight. Are you sure about that? Uh, well, I'm surprised Sam Asian. He doesn't have lasso. It's on five-second cooldown. He doesn't want to fight into it. Oh, there's many EG heroes here. Yeah, Blink Tag just arrived. Tim's run away. But no, Universe, not only will he get the kill, he'll take the courier with it. Blinking forward, finding the pick. Is that the Tinker Ward that set all of that up? I think it, it was. was the Tinker Ward. Yeah, that's not really what you put it for, but you know, nice. You'll take, <laughs> you'll take what you get. Yeah. Uh, but it's still, the, it's the underlying problem you're talking about—the fact that EG just don't have that front liner. Like Zai is sort of becoming it, but he's spending most of his time in Viz running around, yeah, uh, trying to do the damage. But you don't have that big pop damage yet from EG. Uh, he needs to be so careful. There's there's no hero on the Dire that can just go in with confidence. And it's because of the Global Silence. If Global Silence wasn't in this game, I think EG would be playing very differently. But they can't just run in their Mirana, for example, and just try to go for a kill knowing that there's going to be a False Promise. The moment you commit into a fight, you're committed, and you're not getting out again. And then you need to have the stronger firepower. I think it's going to have to mainly come from this Arteezy Drow that is closing in on Silver Edge, and then maybe start opening up on the PA. Take her out first. Good scan from the Radiant. They're reading this movement very well. And might be looking for a counterplay. Everything is ready on both sides for a fight. Oh, Sabale, the leap forward, and he's hit the arrow with a Dream Coil. Okay, that that's where you use your magical burst damage to find the kill. And the that Tinker Ward has provided so much value. I think it just got panged out by Sam H. He's like, you know what, know. guys? We just lost. Wait, wait, two wait, or three wait, times. wait, wait, wait. Are they going to realize that Roshan's being done? Does PA oh. have a look inside the pit? Roshan's so low. Raven's walking straight past it. Now Roshan gets triggered. He'll realize it. The fire strike, it catches two, including the Jakuchi Weaver. Wow. Ateezy is away. What a snipe, Support though. is there. Yeah, if there's one thing EG aren't lacking is physical damage. They can kill Rosh pretty damn fast with a Crest Swarm and this Draw Ranger right clicking. And Zai is going to be more than happy to die for the cause there. Do you like the Silver Edge from the Drow Ranger? Yeah, I do. It's strictly because of the PA, I think. And it's good enough, I think. Like, the, the Shadow Blade often provides the value that you need, but in this game, the upgrade is, is valuable enough to go for it straight away, I think. It's going to give them a chance to kill that PA. Uh, as you talked about, they have the burst. They just need, need to be able to control him a little bit. Really good scan from EG. They uh, they scanned just north of Roshan, looking for the rotation from TNC, and they, they pinged on two heroes. Already understanding the Tinker was in the lane, and the SK was hovering around because they did more. They back up and hold near the tower when they have a little bit more reinforcements. Babysitting Arteezy more than anything else. But now if EG want to attack, there is still that aggressive observer ward. Of course, Mr. Invisible Arteezy just walks straight Ooh, underneath Raven, it. Raven, I don't... They see Tim's... Again, this is this is how Tim's died last time on the top lane. Hiding in the trees, thought he was fine, but the dire vision, the observer ward just sees where the SK is preparing his attack. They really want to fight this? TNC are sticking around. If they see if Sumail shows on this bottom wave, they could go for a play. EG are, shows. EG are splitting up now. They're pinging him out. This is a dead puck if they see it. Yeah, such a long way, but it is still a Yule Scepter on the puck. He just blinked. He orbed. He's dead. He Question is, can oh, he face just in time? He's able to do so. Global silence. He's got the Yule Scepter available as well. Breaking free. Universe into the phase shift. Not only does he bait out the gank, he'll escape the gank. And Global Silence got burned for it. Bottom lane TPs are kicking in. Tim gets the fire strike out. Looking for the kill over on Zyrock. A supply fort. They saw which way Zy went. He went north. 
but there's no follow-up. In fact, Tim's are going in into a different angle. It's to the Marana. The Barra Strike in. Arteezy, the epicenter is out. They dusted him up, so the reveal is on Arteezy. A gust creates a little bit of space, but not enough. Double sentries being planted down. Aegis. Yeah. Oh, they stopped the TP out from Tinker. That's really big. Cuckoo's got nothing left to fight with. One, four, three, seven can curse all he wants. Cuckoo kills himself on the edge of the dream call. The PA can do the work. Arteezy will fall. Both the sentries actually paying off. Now they turn their attention towards Zai. False Promise cannot protect him from the damage output that this PA can do. And they're looking for more. It's crit. Raven will have himself a double kill. Tim, the Burrow Strike, barely missing Universe. They could have been all dead. But EG will escape with Universe as the sole survivor of the EG war. That is a really, really big game for especially the PA. Look at that gold swing for him. 1,200 gold gained there for the PA, 800 for the Sand King. And in comparison, EG's heroes barely gaining anything. Just a little bit of gain for the puck. But TNC, this this is getting scary now. I feel like TNC are leading the game. And you're, you're looking at the gold and it's like slight EG, slightly EG favorite. But the, the game plan is just not working out well enough. And that could have gone even worse for them. If Universe isn't there with that very clutch coil on the Tinker, I think they would have been destroyed that fight. It would have been five for, five for one, five for two, maybe. And Sumail just has to be very careful. This time again, he gets caught by the lasso without leap, with leap off cooldown, or on cooldown, rather. That's right. He didn't have it. He just, he just couldn't really do that much in that fight on his Marana. Die. Stalking. Finding an Invis rune. If he really wants to do anything about Tim's, if he has a little of extra help, they don't have that long range arrow. Crit's the only one who's nearby, so yeah, it looks like this is just going to be him trying to leech an ancient. But Cuckoo is getting into a better position time and time again. Blink as well as BTs. I think the. Like, uh, hard to catch him out. Yeah, he got the lens. You generally get lens on Tinker when your next item is. is um is the axe. Sometimes you can get it with Dagon, but I, I think the, the most common buildup is this exact one where the, the lens comes before the laser axe upgrade, and then you, you focus a lot on just getting laser on two heroes every single cast. I just broke the smoke. They had that smoke for a grand total of 0 0.5 seconds, uh, and he still got the Observer Ward down. They burned a dust charge. So the Obs Ward, the Obs Ward will remain. And TNC waste initiation time. We're gonna get the tower. I don't think EG has any interest in defending something like this. It's hard right now. Raven, by the way, building into Manta style. Oh, they're gonna hesitate. The scan pinged. Back it off. it yeah. actually clipped onto Zai, uh, who was just a little bit further up on the left. So they're sure. very, very worried about an EG initiation. Bit of a the scan actually kind of working against them there. They were totally fine, but they don't have the information and gives EG a little bit of extra space to work with. You see how defensive they are with their obs and sentry? Like they, they put both the obs and the sentry inside the lane on the bottom. So they're looking towards the tier one tower, looking for Drow Ranger to come in with that uh, with that silver red to move in and just attack. But it doesn't happen. Now they take the tower. And EG have continued to file up the jungle in the meantime. Raven's gonna move in. Start dealing damage to the tier two here. Puck gets caught by Sam H here. This is pretty bad for EG. They don't have Oracle in any position to help. I think yeah, he did. Sp they spotted each other there actually. But Sam H has kind of made a perimeter here that EG aren't interested in coming into. So they're gonna go for the top tier one. They will get it. GC takes a beating though. But at the same time, the tier two tower's gone. So yep. tier one, tier one, and tier two for a tier one. You'll take that trade, especially with the Tinker on the field. This is more space for Cuckoo, more money for Cuckoo. He's now 100 gold away from having that Agonims. Damn, that's so strong. Yeah. This, it's a Phantom Assassin. Deso, Manta, and Vanguard. I'm not certain how they kill him. They and, have and to... And if they even focus him. Like, do you focus a different target in the fight? PA is the biggest kill they can find, I think. But it's also one of the harder ones. They need the Silver Edge attack to break Blur, and then they need to hit a stun. The problem is their reliable stun is Dream Coil, and that doesn't last for... So. 1, 4, 3, 7 may die here. He's a little bit out, but at the same time, Arteezy being initiated on that Blink Barrow Strike. He's the bigger kill. Stuns his TP. They need a crit, and with the damage they have, it will be enough. Oh. And... Woo ah, goodbye, Universe! Oh, I love playing this hero. <laughs> You just love the grave of sorts. Oh! Another hit, Zai! It feels good just to watch it, you know? Time lapse this.
Yep, he will. Oh, <laughs> but too late. Yeah, he's still taking the damage. He didn't want to go back into, into that horrible area. And if he waited half a second longer, he might have had to kill off the courier. All right, Raven, slow down. Don't crit on every attack. Then you won't have it for the fight. <laughs> yeah, because he can control that. <laughs> just, uh, just put down the lucky charms for a second. This is this is kind of funny. You look at Crit, and he has seven urns on the Oracle, but he just can't use them in the fight because heroes are getting bursted too fast. Like he doesn't really get to heal people up. It's very uncharacteristic to see this many charges on an urn in a competitive game. It happens quite a lot, of, uh, quite a lot in, in pub games where you're not watching your economy with it. But it doesn't happen many of this urn. Maybe he's got to put on the Tinker every time he sees it. But yeah, that's pretty good. But he's never going to be in range. Yeah, the range is the issue. Phantom Assassin going to be on the run and uh, evade. The attack from Zai. All right, Roshan is up in about 10-15 uh, seconds. Both teams can kill this very fast. PA, one of the one of the best heroes at killing Roshan. Innately wants to go for a minus armor. Has the crit, has the evasion, so she can just solo it. Even with just this 10% life steal talent, can easily solo out a Rosh here. And now EG, they Abyssal need to make blade. it now. This... That abyssal so close for Raven. Like they're actually going to have straight lockdown control now too. Got the bat. Yeah. This this guy is going to kill everyone if they don't get him under control. There goes the arrow. They're inside of Roshan. The PA Illusion's on his way in, too. They deal with it quickly. Committing Rift as well as some decent abilities. As he's already triggered off his aura. And Tim's, well, wait for the timing. And Roshan is low. Stifling Dagger goes in. Rockets as well. Roshan killed by the dive. And the epicenter! TNT! Lacquering it on top of Evil Jesus. Arteezy, Chris trying to keep him alive. Maybe it was enough heal. We'll see if he does pop or not. He doesn't. He's back to full life. They had the buyback from the Weaver. They need to win this fight for Raven. He's in the thick of it. Looking for the crit. Their mage will fall. They'll lose a the gem of true sight. The bar strike creating a little bit more space here from Tim's. They need a little bit more here. TNC. They haven't done it just yet. 1437 will fall. Is their buyback? You've still got Tim's as well as Raven. This two man basher army killing off evil geniuses. Raven with the ultra kill. And Evil Genius is committing heavily into that. Yeah, they bought back both the... What's that? It was, just, it was just Weaver. So they bought back the Weaver, but they died five heroes. Who even got the Aegis in that mess? I honestly, like... Aegis was on some mail, and he died again. Uh, the cheese is... Also used. Cheese was consumed. It might have been Arteezy who had uh, it. He got healed to full. Cheese was consumed by Arteezy. Yeah. But in spite of that, so they had Aegis, Cheese, and a buyback, and they lost the fight. That is, that's pretty bad. But of course, like, the, the positioning EG are in to take that Roche is a huge gamble play. I think it was the right choice to try to go for it. But if they get caught like that, three or four man laser twice, epicenter, three man burrow, you're just not winning that fight. But they kind of had to do something. They felt like the game was slipping away. Are they going to force this? The bar strike! The sentry ward was down. They saw him with a fresh abyssal blade at the front lines. Zai is gone. That's a dive back for him. And Cuckoo's looking for more. Crit has to false promise himself, allowing them to lasso Universe, bringing him down. And the bottom racks. It was evil geniuses that helped TNC fall apart. Now the shoe is most definitely on the other foot. And they get another blink, Baro. Crit will fall. Arteezy trying to be the cannon under the tier four towers. They will actually bring down Sam H. The PA into the back lines. The laser, the rockets, the bash. Arteezy will fall. And EG will lose a second lane of racks guaranteed. The question is, how much longer do they stick in this game? Do they believe they still have what it takes? The draw lineup has failed. Yeah, it's pretty much failed at this point. I mean, it's, it's still possible. I don't think they should GG out. There is a chance of getting a fight that they win. And the reason, I think the, the chance that they have is still that PA doesn't have a BKB. Um, he might buy one now, or he might just go even harder on the damage. So they can kill Raven with the right combination where everything just clicks. Like you hit a good arrow, you get Silver Edge off, and everyone bursts him. It is really, really hard, though, and I, d I don't think they're going to win the fight if they don't kill Raven first. I, I think it's just going to slowly kill everyone together with the Tinker. But there's, there's no this, way they can do it, though. This Manta style was actually a really key pickup. Um, he used it in that last fight at the Roche Pit to remove Fate's Edict. It's one of the good counterplays EG have to this PA, and it just doesn't exist. When he gets disarmed, he just breaks it and kills the Oracle right away, because Oracle has to expose himself to even get that spell off. And he can get punished really, really hard by Raven. And TNC, very well executed game in my opinion here. Um, this yeah. is this is not easy to play. Like when you're playing against a draw lineup and you're this far behind this early, it's difficult. But they found the two the two fights that they needed.
put themselves in a great position, and now it looks like Raven. No BKB plan. He's going to go for the butterfly once he gets that. Yeah. How do you kill this guy? You, you don't. It's it's just that simple. Evil geniuses can wish, hope, pray that he just goes in solo and away from everyone else from TNC, but they can't control. They don't have that wonderful chronosphere that Universe could bring in in game one. Instead, it's it's Tim's being the aggressor. Tim's as Barastri is catching out two, three heroes every time. He's only now just looking to build up his Aghanim Scepter. He's been, he's been hitting absolutely everything. I think he's done more control than we've seen from Sam H. Sam H is almost like that uh, little distraction birdie, the red flag to the bull kind of thing. Go, go and attack this. Go and try and control this. Trick, you commit your false promise to control that. It's actually true. Like, you can't, he's level you can't. 15 on Batrider. <laughs> this Hank King's level 21. You, you, oh, that's you can't, so unusual, you, can't folk, you can't false promise three heroes in a line stop. No. And now you've got the BKB at least for, for Rateezy. He has this, but he's got no way to give distance. Like, there's no... like. Also keeping in mind, like he went for the Shadow Blade at the Silver Edge to try and counter against the Phantom Assassin. He never was able to get his Hurricane Pike. He never was able to get that repositioning item, which you kind of need to have Pedro Ranger in the fight. Yeah, that's a fair point that he could have gone for a four step after that Shadow Blade, or maybe even before, and then finished the Silver Edge. Oh, here it's they come. Hurt him. Moonlight Shadow, they're right on top of TNC. How do they do it? The Global Silence 1437, cancelling them off. Zai is low. Does he have a way out this one? Will he survive long enough? The epicenter, BKB at least protects Arteezy for the moment, but Cuckoo into the tree. Spamming out the damage and Raven crits against the mail. Look at the damage. They can't even hit him. They're trying and trying, but the blind are hitting the very, very visible. EG will lose four and the game. TNC will get a 1 1 result to, by taking game two in this first series of TI7. <sighs> If you pick Raven for your fantasy team, I think he gave a lot of points this game. 19-0, 230 CS. I, I, couldn't, I can't bring up the board anymore. Yeah, Raven. Hey, man, Raven is one of the big ones. The, I think the only downside, I think, for TNC was the fact they have uh, two series today, maybe? Either way. Uh, oh, they only have two series. Uh, then I guess you should.